Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news in Bachelor Nation. As you guys know, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comedian and host of Bachelor Nation News. Colton Underwood hasn't been in the news in a bit. Uh, his production, uh, which we now know is called Coming Out Colton. Nice alliteration there. Coming Out Colton will be premiering very shortly on Netflix. We'll talk about it. Let's look at the different genres that uh, the production is said to be in. And we're going to discuss uh, what this means uh, for the people that wanted uh, his project to get canceled. His, a lot of people want, there was a big petition to get his project canceled. We'll get into all of that. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy these types of stories, the conversations around um, social issues within our world that we call Bachelor Nation and also as it exists in the greater ecosphere in 2021. Now, there is no story whatsoever about someone coming out of the closet. There is no story that uh, we are judging about someone who's living their authentic self, uh, releasing the shackles from the life that they once knew and being authentic to who they are. The story is the waves that were cast in the pursuit of coming out. The story is his ex, Cassie Randolph, and uh, you know the tracking device allegedly that was placed in the trunk uh, underneath the trunk of her car, and the text messages and the court documents and the restraining orders and all those different things happening right before coming out of the closet, uh, the last hurrah of heterosexuality. Which you know you can have empathy towards how challenging it must be, or maybe maybe you, maybe maybe you can't have empathy. Maybe if you're like a heterosexual person. You can't understand what that torment must be like, but I can assume anything that leads what is otherwise a seemingly well-rounded, good person like Colton to do something as sad and desperate as put a tracking device on your ex's car makes you wonder, wow, what is that turmoil like? We'll get into all of it uh, right now. We've got, um, let me just adjust this here. We're shooting this on the fly, so my graphics are a little off. There we go. So we got the thumbnail and in the cast, we have Colton Underwood, of course. Genre, lifestyle, reality TV, LGBTQ TV shows. This show is provocative. We'll have to see what that means. As we know, it's sort of a docu-drama series, soap series, docu-series they're calling it. And it's going to follow Colton on his journey to go from the most eligible bachelor in the world. The Bachelor is the biggest dating reality show in our known universe, Earth, that is. Maybe there's a bigger one in some other planet. Xenu, wherever the Scientologists come from. Who knows? Uh, Tom Cruise might be the most eligible bachelor there. But in the case here, it's Colton, or was Colton Underwood. So how does he go from that to now uh, living a different life? Um, which obviously, uh, for better or for worse, it is a different life. And in the gay community, there are people that will talk about being a sort of a gay shaman. These terms that they... That, that are used to kind of say, hey, I will show you the ropes. I will show you the lingo, what it's like. Of course, he was uh, uh, recorded, and I'm sure this will all be in the documentary, which we don't have a release date yet, but he was recorded at Stonewall Inn. Is that Stonewall Inn? Do I have that right name? I'm already starting to question myself here, and the last thing I want to do is mess this up. Uh, he's uh, with Gus Kentworthy, I believe, uh, who is a... Um, why am I freezing up here? Uh, boy, they don't want you to talk about this. The whole thing's freezing. Uh, Stonewall riots were, you know, riots that took place um, when people were, when when the gay uh, community was fighting for their basic human rights, really. And so this is all the stuff that I'm hoping his documentary will bring uh, into the light, into the mainstream world. And I know... You might be listening to this go, Dave, everyone knows about the Stonewall riots. You know, just like you think, well, everyone knows about the, the massacre in Tulsa or all these other issues. The, the truth is, not everybody does. We have a very broken uh, education system with what is taught in schools. Stonewall riots were a series of spontaneous demonstrations by members of the gay community in response to a police raid that began in the early morning hours of June 28th, 1969 at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village, one of my favorite parts of New York. I absolutely love the community there. And... Um, uh, a lot of people aren't necessarily upset with Colton for coming out, but are upset at the fact that he's going to be coming out and monetizing that coming out through this sort of educational series or uh, series that follows him around. So a petition has been created, a petition to cancel Colton under his Netflix document near 10,000 signatures, and then some. This was earlier this year, and of course nothing has come of it. This is disgusting. Not enough people know about the stalking and abuse he's committed, and anything less than praise of him will be panned as homophobia. 
I've already seen it on Instagram and Twitter. People calling him toxic or an abuser are met with an onslaught of you're a homophobe. You just hate him because he's gay. Nope, Colton is an awful and dangerous person and a known abuser. He should get no energy and no attention regardless of his sexual orientation. This is beyond indefensible on Netflix's part and it sends the worst possible message to abusers and those abused. Now, what a year. I mean, p- listen, pandemic... Oh boy, some people, everyone's got a story from the pandemic, but is anyone's as bizarre and wide ranging as Colton's? Starts it dating Cassie Randolph. Then he gets COVID and he, early, early days of COVID. We, well, he says he does. I don't have any proof that he actually had COVID. And why, why would you think someone's lying about it? You wouldn't. But then he puts a tracking device in someone's car and you go, well, let's audit the rest of this story. Gets, which other, other people haven't, as far as I know, done a good job of uh, questioning him because, you know, if you lie about one thing, you got to question everything. So he gets COVID and then he's in the third floor of Cassie Randolph's house and Huntington Beach, her family's house. Then Cassie Randolph breaks up with him. And then while they're going through their breakup, he um, uh, stalks and harasses her. And this was the news heard around the world. September 11th, never forget. September 11th, 2020, allegedly placed tracking device on Cassie's car, claims harassing text. Text messages were created he used a different phone number to create um, a, a the idea that he was being stalked as well. So from a fake phone number, he stalked himself and he stalked Cassie. None of this has ever been addressed um, outside of the court. Uh, he, she dropped the charges after receiving guidance from power attorney Brian Friedman. Uh, also, uh, Brian Friedman you know, was in Chris Harrison and Gabrielle Union and a bunch of other uh, cases for entertainment lawyers. Um, he got her the bag. We're just going to assume she got a payout to not talk about this ever again. She moved houses. And of course, it's it's sad because, you know, you can see in YouTube videos, she makes it very clear not to shoot outside of her window because she doesn't want anyone to see where she lives, which that's not the sad part. It's the fear that she has to live her life with because of all that, where Colton gets to make a Netflix show and, and, um, and be praised. And the truth is, in complicated matters, you can be accepting of someone for coming out. But also, that doesn't give you the right to hold them uh, accountable to what happened before that. And and all we've tried to do on this channel is have these discussions. So while we haven't heard much from Colton, we have had so many people, I mean, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands maybe, comment um, oh, millions of views from you guys saying these topics need to continue to be discussed. Cassie Randolph still processing ex-Colton Underwood coming out as gay. She was not made aware. She didn't get a heads up. They know each other's media people. They, 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 it doesn't mean he has to call her. She could literally have blocked his number and he can still get in touch with his publicist and say, can you just let Cassie know that tomorrow I'm coming out of the... You know, just it's just like a nice thing to know before, you know, all these... Because what happened was, and we don't know this for sure, but what, what we believe is that Cassie Randolph dropped the court case, which was literally... He could have gone up to 365 days in prison for that tracking device. This is a heavy, heavy, you know, accusation she made according to her having proof. You don't get the temporary restraining order without having some some sort of proof that there's a truth to the matter. She drops the case and does so thinking this is all going to go away. And then, of course, when he comes out of the closet, it reopens everything. Everyone talks about it. Elizabeth Wiseman, I believe I have that name right. Um, I hope I hope so. I could have the wrong name. Is it or is it Elizabeth Kitt? Either way, um, Variety interviewed Colton Underwood and he discussed coming out of the closet and how, you know, he had haters for it. And it was like, no, you had haters because you haven't properly addressed anything within within your storyline about, you know, um, about what actually went down. And everyone sees him as an abuser who's being let off. I'm not, this isn't a cancel. I, I, I didn't sign the petition to cancel this documentary. I'm excited to hear and see how it all goes. He obviously says he doesn't F with Bachelor anymore, meaning he doesn't kind of deal with the show or anything, which is kind of like, I understand, but also it's the show that made you who you are and um, and kind of gave you that, I mean, talk about, g- gave you, uh, um, you know, the, the platform that you have. So, of course, play, people are have been posting. I, I never made a story about this because in the end, in the end, I'm trying to do my best to um, sort of sift through what's news and what's gossip. And I understand that that is a delicate balance beam to walk through. But, of course, Colton had a boyfriend in Hawaii. Hey, I mean, I've seen him in my town. I mean, there's, you know, he's in the 
uh, Los Angeles as well. Appears to have ventured, ventured into the dating waters after coming out as gay and the water is fine. So we're happy for him on that aspect. My hopes are that people are able to watch the documentary and see um, some, have some grace and humility for him, but also get some closure towards what happened for Cassie. Listen, as you guys know, nobody, literally nobody on the face of planet Earth has been harder on him in not letting this story drop more than me. Uh, and at the same time, I've received what I believe to be are encouraging and nice messages from other people that he may have harmed that say, hey, thanks, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. And that's, and that's all we can do. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we're shooting for perfection. Like everyone's got to be perfect here. It's just a matter of, Hey, have the conversation. If you're going to have Robin Roberts, uh, do I have that name right? Sorry. Sorry. There's a lot of layers to this story. If he's going to go and do his huge interview where he comes out of the closet and this and that, you're going to have to face some tough questionings. He got a little bit from the variety article, but he actually said he only came out of the closet because he was blackmailed. In, in a steam room at a massage, I'm sorry, not a steam room, at a massage parlor in Hollywood. And I just don't buy that story. I messaged Variety and Elizabeth Wagmeister, that's her name, Wagmeister. I messaged her on Twitter just to say, hey, can you go in further depth uh, on how you vetted his story? Because it's important that we get that, you know, that confirmation that the story was vetted. And there, and there is no, there was no response. So it's clear that people don't want to talk about these things. But if any, if there's any information that comes out and that we get a hold of, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know more. For those that don't want to watch the documentary uh, or the docu series, I totally understand. I will be recapping it. I don't know if I will do that as a episode by episode recap, or it'll be more of a uh, sort of, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to piece it together based on what we see and we'll talk more about it. I'm sure there's going to be tons of news that is made from this. It is one of the biggest stories to ever hit bachelor nation just naturally, uh, before he came out of the closet, it was one of the biggest stories. And then when after it came out, it's a big story. It involves purity culture. It involves homophobia, growing up in a country that hasn't properly sort of shown the love stories of uh, homosexual relationships. It involves um, toxic love, you know, addiction, uh, all these different layers. And they're all intertwined and it's hard to pick them all apart. So we, ad we address them uh, sort of as much as we can. But just know if you're out there and if you're a survivor of some form of abuse, manipulation, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, uh, just know that these stories are being told. These stories from survivors are being told nobody's alone in this. And I, I truly believe the more we can be like, we're so litigious as a country. Everyone's afraid of a lawsuit. If, if Colton would just go on like a podcast and talk for three hours about everything he was going through, it doesn't make what he did right. But at least we could get into that mindset and understand how sad of a place he was to be getting a burner phone or probably going through, you know, getting a Google phone number so that he can do all these different things. How desperate and sad that was. I'd love to know more than that, not for my own personal sake, uh, you know, for my own interest, but I think it'd be very cathartic for people that have been with a partner who has... Um, who has uh, been very addicting, addictive, uh, jealous, um, toxic, emotionally manipulative, and all those things, to know that people don't just wake, out, wake up out of bed one day and become that way. They're sort of raised to be that way in a society that just isn't quite as enlightened as some of us would hope it to be. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. When this uh, uh, series comes out, you know to come back here and we'll talk all about it. All right, folks, we'll talk to you later. Bye now.